As I see practitioners, they aren't focusing on the right piece of that pipeline out of the house. They're not focusing on the dysbiosis. They're not focusing on that microbiome. They're just like, oh, we'll take this to help with your bloating. And then to five months later, we're still in the same spot. If you've struggled with PMS or period pain, heavy bleeding, or just hormonal issues in general, and you feel like you've tried everything, you've worked with other providers, you've tried certain supplements, you've tried dietary changes, you've made some lifestyle changes, and you're still not seeing that progress that you're looking for, it's likely because you don't fully understand how your hormone metabolism is working. So let's dive into what you might be missing and how we're going to help your body get to where it needs to be. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Bala. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I specialize in women's hormonal health and I help you get easier periods without needing to use birth control. So let's dive into my favorite analogy on how to think about your hormone metabolism. Let's first start with your liver. And I know I talk about the liver a lot, and that is because your liver is so important for so many different processes in your body. Your liver is metabolizing and filtering everything that you're eating, drinking, breathing, putting on your skin, everything in your environment, everything that you're consuming has to go through your liver first. And so your liver is doing a lot of things. And your liver is also metabolizing and processing your hormones. So if you have hormonal issues, we have to look at how your liver is doing it. And then we also have to look at your gut because with hormone metabolism, there are three parts. Two of them happen in the liver. One of them happens in the gut. And so if your body is not eliminating the way that we need it to, we're not going to be getting out all of that estrogen. So you might see things like heavy bleeding, period flu symptoms where you feel like you're getting sick before you start your period, but then you feel fine. Or you might notice that you have flares and allergy symptoms. You might notice that you have a lot of clotting, that you're having spotting before your period. You might notice hot flashes or night sweats. All of these are signs your body is not clearing that estrogen out as effectively as we'd like it to. So we look at the gut and we look at the liver. So now that we understand how that works, I want you to think about this analogy of a bathtub. So we have our bathtub, right? We've got the tub itself. We've got the faucet and the water coming in. Then we've got the tub drain. And then we have the sewer line, the pipeline out of the house. So those are the three parts to our bathtub analogy. And where this fits into hormone metabolism is this. So the water coming in, okay, the faucet is going to be your liver. That's going to act as your liver. Everything that your liver is having to process. The water flow is what's in your environment. Everything you're eating, everything you're drinking, everything you're breathing, everything you're putting on your skin, all of the things that you're consuming, all of that, our environment, right? Our environmental toxins and how our water is and everything. That is the water flow coming in. Then we've got the drain of the bathtub, and that is everything your liver is able to process, okay? So that's kind of the liver metabolism piece. Then we've got the pipeline out of the house. That is going to be your gut elimination. So those are the three parts and how we're going to think about them as far as liver metabolism goes. So I want you to think about a few things. Think about what happens if the water coming in is too much. The force of the water coming in is way too high for that bathtub drain to handle, right? Okay, so we turn up the water, we increase the water pressure, and that could be your environmental toxins. That could be those xenoestrogens. That could be phthalates and sulfates and pesticides and all of those things in our environment that some we can control, some we can't. That is the water coming in. So what's going to happen to your bathtub if we turn up the water pressure, but the drain is still the same? I'm going to let you think about that while I ask you a couple more questions. My next question for you is, say you clean up your environment. Say your environment looks amazing. There's nothing going on there. You've cleaned up what you can. You really minimize xenoestrogens. You've got an air filter, water filter, all those things. So the water flow coming into your bathtub is, is fine. It's, it's normal. But the drain is clogged with a bunch of hair because, you know, all of us are having hair shedding as well. Our, our drain is a little bit clogged. What's going to happen? And the last thing I want you to think about is what's going to happen. Say the water is fine. Say the drain is fine. So water pressure is great. You've worked on all of those things. The drain is amazing. You've worked on a lot for liver metabolism. You're eating all the nutrients, taking all the supplements, whatever. What's going to happen if the pipeline out of the house is not draining? So with all of these questions, there's one piece of the whole pipeline of the whole bathtub analogy where something could go wrong. And what's going to happen in any of these situations? Your bathtub is going to overflow. When that bathtub is overflowing, we see pain. We see cramps. We see irritability. We see mood swings. We see fatigue. We see trouble sleeping. We see eczema flares. We see psoriasis flares. We see gut issues. We see heavy bleeding. We see night sweats. We see all of those symptoms that we're dealing with. That's your tub overflowing. So we need to figure out, is it the water? Is it the drain? Is it the pipeline out of the house? Maybe it's a combination of all of them. And for most people, it is. So that is what I'm helping you to figure out. Where is the issue? So when we look at the water coming in, we're going to look at environmental medicine. 
that's where I'm looking at what are you using to drink your water? What kind of water are you drinking? What filter are you using? Are we adding electrolytes back in? Because most filters are devoid of that. Is there mold in your home? Are you exposed to that? What is the air quality? Do you live right next to a really busy road? Do you live in the city or do you live out in the country? What kind of food are you eating? Are you getting enough produce? Are you washing that produce? Organic or not, needs to be washed. What kind of protein are you getting? What kind of clothes are you wearing? What kind of water bottle are you? All of these little things that we do on a daily basis are going to add to how much water pressure is coming into our tub. Then we're going to look at that drain, right? How can we get that hair out of our drain? We are going to help our liver do all of the things that it needs to do. We're going to clear that drain by helping it with lots of B vitamins, antioxidants, higher doses of vitamin C. We're going to help it by adding in cruciferous veggies to help with that estrogen metabolism in particular. Microgreens. We're just going to add green, lots of greens in general, helping with that liver metabolism. We're going to focus on water intake. Okay, All of these little things that we do are going to help with our liver metabolism. Things like castor oil packs, contrast hydrotherapy dry brushing. All of these things are helping that drain, our liver, function a little bit better. Then we're going to look at that pipeline out of the house. What can we do for your gut? Do you have dysbiosis? Are you constantly gassy? Are you constantly bloated? Can you drink water and be bloated? Are you waking up feeling uncomfortable and bloaty and gassy? Are you not pooping every single day? Because guess what? If you're not pooping every single day, we're not getting anything out. Are you having loose stools? Are you having urgency? Are you having a combination of all of these things? And it just depends on the day because all of that is telling me that sewer line out of the house is having a lot of trouble. And that's where I want to start because think about it. Even if you're water line is fine. The the water pressure is fine. The drain is working fine, but the sewer line out of the house is not. The pipeline out of the house is not working right. That's where we're going to have to start. So it doesn't matter if you're focusing on the water pressure and you're changing out your entire environment. You're doing lots of detoxes and cleanses or whatever to try and help your liver metabolism. If your gut is in a bad place, it doesn't matter that you're doing all these other things. Your tub is still overflowing. So we have to start where the deficit is. I don't want you to go find a 21-day detox and do that and be like, look, I did this and I'm clearing out my liver. I'm helping my liver because your gut is still going to be a hot mess. So that microbiome is not in a healthy healthy balance. If we're not seeing regular poops, if we're not seeing well-formed poops, if we are not seeing less gas and less bloating, we're still going to need to focus on that pipeline out of the house before we talk about your liver metabolism or what's coming into your environment. Yes, working on those two things is also very important and we can do it simultaneously. And if you've been working on those things, but you've neglected this one, the pipeline, we're going to see problems. And that's why you feel stuck because you haven't been prioritizing the things that need prioritizing. So when we work together, that is what I like to help you with, is figuring out which piece of my hormone metabolism is struggling the most. Is it my gut? Is it my liver? Is it my environment? Is it all three of these? And how can I support that? Maybe you already have clean water. Okay, maybe it's your environment. Maybe there's some mold. Maybe there's something going on in your gut. And all of these things are so related, right? So there's so many different factors as to why you might be having hormonal issues. And a lot of times I see practitioners skip one or they only focus on one thing or they aren't focusing on the right piece of that pipeline out of the house. They're not focusing on the dysbiosis. They're not focusing on that microbiome. They're just like, oh, we'll take this to help with your bloating. And then to five months later, we're still in the same spot. So it's really important to know what your body's asking for, where the deficit is and how we can fix that. So if you need help with this, come schedule a visit. This is exactly what I love helping you figure out with an intake, with lab testing, asking you tons of questions and providing you insight into your body. So come join me if you have questions, if you need help, leave a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on this.